Hello, this is Julia, and welcome to my craft room adventures. Thank you so much for joining me today. This time I created an interactive magic picture changer card with stamps and dies by Lawn Fawn. First, I stamped out all of my images from the Butterfly Kisses and Birthday Before and After stamp sets by Lawn Fawn onto Nina Solo White cardstock with Gina K Amalgam Ink. And now I'm coloring them in with Copic markers. For my fox, I'm using E11 and E15. Just laying down my darkest shade, the E15, where I want my shadows to be, blending those out with the E11 leaving some of the areas completely white on my first layer to make sure they're lighter than the rest later, and then going in with a second layer with the E15 first, and then blending everything out with the E11. I'm using W00 for the tummy, the tail, and the face, and I'm also adding a little bit of R20 on the cheeks. For my bears, I'm using E50s, E50, E51, and E53. Just going in with the E53 first, blending that out with the E51, and then with the E50. And also doing a second layer here. Just blending it out to make sure that parts of the face are lighter. And then adding some R20 on the cheeks. I'm coloring the bunny exactly the same way. E51, uh, E50, E51, and E53, and R20 on the cheeks. Just blending those three colors out. I always leave a part of the image that I want lightest, just white at first, and only adding the lightest shade on my second layer. Again with the R20, and I'm using double uh, W00 for the tummies again. For my little birdie, I'm using Y00, Y11, and Y21, and for his beak, Y23. Also using those same shades for the top bit of the candles on the cake, and the same combination for the bow on my first little gift. Just going in with Y21, then Y11, and then Y00. Then I'm going in with some red shades for my first gift box, and I'm using R000, R00, R20, and R22. I first started with the R20, R00, and 000, but that was a little bit too light, so I went in with the R22 for my second layer as my darkest shade, then the R20, and then the R00. I'm just coloring in the second gift box exactly the same, except for that I went in with the R22 on my first go this time. Just blending those out with the R20, R00, and R000. And I'm coloring in my cake, also using the R22 and the R20 the R22 very sparingly in this case, because I really wanted the frosting on the cake to be pretty light. And then blending out the R20 with the R00 and then the R000. For the beads on the decorations, I'm using R29, R22, and R20. For the cake, I'm using E30s, in this case E35, E33, and E31, just coloring those in. And I'm going in with exactly the same colors, the R22 just below the candles to create some shadows, and the R20 as my darkest shade for most of the frosting, R00 and R000 to blend out. As you can see, this part is stamped on um, a full sheet of paper. Uh, just ignore the top cake because the stamping didn't look right to me. Um, 
because this will be later cut out with the magic picture changer die. Now I'm using some teal shades, which is BG11, BG13, and BG49. To color in the candles and the little, what's it called, banners or bunting on the cake. Also going in with some greens, which is G000 and GO2. And some violet shades. I will tell you what those are in a minute because I will be using them again. Um, going in with the BG11, BG13 and BG49 combination again to color the bow. Just using the BG49 in the very darkest areas then the BG13 and blending out with BG11. Also doing two coats there. And I'm also using the same combination for the box of the that the bird sits in. Or basically pops out of. Um, I'm coloring in the darkest areas with the BG49 then going in with BG13 and then BG11. There you'll see me using the tip to tip technique between the BG11 and the BG13 because on the large area of the box I didn't really get a good blend so I just try to create a medium shade there. Now I'm going in with the green shades again, G000 and G02. And for my violets, I'm using V000, V01, and RV63. The RV63 is my darkest shade, then going in with the V01, and then the V000. Always doing two coats because I just, I don't know, it really looks better to me. Now I'm just correcting some of my little coloring mishaps with the blender pen. I realized that my Copic blender was too dry and I had a Spectrum Noir one lying around, so I just used that one. And I realized that I actually preferred it over the Copic brush nib because the bullet nib allows you to really push back the color in very tiny areas because it doesn't it isn't as flexible. So Give it a go, it's really, really awesome. You could also use the original Copic if you wanted. Now I just die cut a panel um, from of Bristol Smooth cardstock with the uh, stitched hillside borders, and I'm ink blending that with Twisted Citron and Mode Lawn Distress Oxide ink. Just blending the colors back and forth until I'm happy with the result. I really wanted the bottom edge to be a lot lighter than the rest. Now I'm just adding some water splatters and some colored splatters with the Twisted Citron and Mode Lawn. I just added a bit of water with my Distress Sprayer, or the, actually the Nouveau Spray Bottle. And I'm just adding those in. I die cut the add-on for the Magic Picture Changer. And I'm just ink blending that with Tumbled Glass and Salty Ocean to create a, the look of a sky. Just going back and forth until it looks smooth, or mostly smooth. Doing the exact same thing for my background panel that I die cut with the Stitched Rectangle Stackables by Lawn Fawn. Also out of Bristol Smooth cardstock because I just find that ink blending works best on it. I know that oxides aren't as you know, finicky to, to blend than regular distressings, but they still look most beautiful on Bristol, I find. I'm moving the, the add-on um, back into uh, in front of the panel just to see if the ink blending lines up because I really wanted to create a scene. And now it's time to also ink blend the moving pieces of my Magic Picture Changer. I stamped the cakes onto some masking paper, I fussy cut them, and I'm now just placing them on my colored images to match up the sky scene for my picture changer. Just 
going back and forth. As you can see, it doesn't blend as nice. Maybe that's just me. It could be that I'm too heavy handed for it. Uh, but this is actually a Nina. And you can see the difference on how it blends on Bristol Smooth cardstock just before and how it blends on Nina cardstock. Maybe I'm just too heavy handed for it. I don't know, but I think I will stick with my Bristol Smooth cardstock. <laughs> Just making sure that I covered all of the areas that would be visible in the window. And now for the reveal. This is really, really nice to watch. <laughs> now it's time for the die cutting. I also implanted a little bit of uh, the color combo for the little pull tab. And now I'm just lining up the windows. I just placed them down just eyeballing it but then I realized that I really wanted the cakes to be in the exact same position on both panels so now you'll see me just making sure they line up correctly I'm just using a ruler to make sure that the spacing of both images is as identical as I can as I can get it just so that when the image transitions it looks like it's supposed to be in the right spot now to assemble the mechanism i'm just folding the panel along the square lines that the die created just those little flaps that you see me doing here and the just the main piece and then i'm adding score tape to both sides of these tiny flaps so four pieces in total And I'm just removing the backing sheet and folding in the little score lines to create a track for the moving piece of our magic picture changer. And then I'm using the anti-static powder tool generously. I really, really went in there with the, with the powder tool, just tapping on the back to make sure that enough powder comes out because it really makes sure that the mechanism runs super, super smoothly. And now I'm just inserting the inside piece into the track and pushing the front tabs into the coordinating tab on the back of the panel. They go in really, really easily and then you can already see the mechanism moving. Just make sure you don't push it too far like I did or you could just remove the tabs and you'd have to start over. Now I'm just removing the backing sheets making sure that the inside piece is not touching any of the adhesive and that closes our magic picture changer mechanism. I'm adding the decorative tab at the end which also acts like a stopper. That way you can be sure you don't push out the panel too far. And there we go. This makes our magic picture changer. Now I'm adding tape runner to the corners starting from the, the center window and the sides of uh, the short sides of the panel. This makes sure that nothing, uh, none of the adhesive uh, get in the way of the mechanism. And that's the magic picture changer. I, you, you'll see me playing with it a bunch of times in this video because it was just so much fun. I had this die for a while and I was so intimidated to use it, but now that I did, I'm just I'm so in love with it and I really want to make lots more cards with it. I just added the background panel onto an A2 size card base and now I'm just centering the magic picture changer with some foam tape behind because you don't really need it but I also always find that it's easier to, to grab the piece when there's a little bit of distance between the card base and the pull tab. I also added the hill on the bottom and now I'm just as you can see there are some images lying around I just I was just playing around with placement I die cut a bunch of tiny clouds that come with the center picture window card out of white cardstock and I'm just using liquid glue to place them down just using some tweezers because the tiny ones were really hard to hold <laughs> Thank you. 
this time I actually didn't forget to stamp my sentiment. I just didn't know where it was supposed to go yet. Uh, I'm just using the powder tool to make sure and because I wanted to heat emboss it. Just placing it in my mini misty. And I'm using the happy birthday from the birthday before and after stamp set as my sentiment. Also using the little exclamation point at the end. And I'm just heat embossing that in white. I'm using the WOW Opaque Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder. Just tapping off any excess. Off to the side, my heat gun was already heating up and I took it to the paper when it was already nice and hot. Now it was time to add my images. I'm just using some liquid glue to put them down, or to place them down, and some of them with a little bit of dimension with some foam squares. But mostly just flat on the background with liquid glue. Here goes a little party hat. I was trying to see if I wanted my critters to wear a party hat, but I decided against it. Now I'm just adding some white pen details with a Posca marker. Just adding some stripes on the box, some dot details on the other gift package or the gift wrapping, a few dots on the other. making the turquoise or the teal bow also polka dotted. And then I'm just using my jelly roll to add some white highlights to my little critters. And then I also wanted to add some sparkles, so I'm using the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen in the Glitter Gloss. And I'm just adding that to the gift boxes, the bows, and also to the cake where I didn't add the white pen highlights. At first I just used it on the candles and the little embellishments on the cake, and then I realized that that wasn't enough, so I just glittered the entire cake and also the clouds. If you're doing a magic picture changer, remember to do the before and the after because I almost forgot and then I realized, oh, there's a s actually a second cake and I need to glitter that as well. And that finishes my first ever magic picture changer card. I had so much fun creating this card and I'm really glad that I finally decided to give this type of a card a try. I really hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.